So I've got a bunch of wise cameras set up at my house, but I want to be able to watch the video feed on my computer without having to pay for a subscription. In this video, follow my cheap ass to see how I turn this wise cam into an IP camera so that I can monitor my streams on a computer or phone without using their app or paying for a subscription. In order to do this, I will be setting up a Docker container in a LXC running on my Proxmox server. This may sound complicated, but don't worry. If I can figure it out, it can't be that bad. What I will be using is the Docker Wise Bridge from MRLT8, which creates a local WebRTC, RTSP, RTMP, or HLS stream for most of your Wise cameras, including the Wise Cam versions 1 through version 4, the Wise Cam flashlights, the Wise Cam doorbells, etc. You can look at the GitHub page linked in the description below for the full list of cameras supported. This solution does not require any modifications or firmware changes to your WISE device, which is quite nice. There is a solution to change the firmware on the WISE cam to a version that does support RTSP directly, so I may do a video for that if I get enough requests in the comments below. The Proxmox virtual environment is built to handle two kinds of virtualization. Number one is the containers using Linux containers, otherwise known as an LXC. And then the second is the full virtualization with virtual machines. In this demo, I'm going to build out a LXC and then install a Docker container to it. First thing we need to do is to download the Ubuntu template so we can build out a container with it. From the resource selector, click on the local disk and then CT templates and then templates to see the list of available templates. In the search box, I'm going to type in turnkey-core, which will show me the core builds that I need. And then I'm going to click on turnkey core and then download. Takes a few seconds to download this thing. And then once we see the task OK at the bottom here, we can go ahead and close out the pop-up. Now we see that we have the Debian 12 turnkey core version 18.0-1 downloaded. I am now going to click on create CT to create a LXC container. In the general tab, we can set the CT ID, which I will make 305. And then I can give it a host name of wise-bridge because that's what this container is going to do. And then I'm going to add a password. And then make sure that the unprivileged container is checked and then nesting is also checked. I would have checked the privilege box if I had a TPU or other hardware that I want to pass through to my container, but I don't. So that's why I have it as an unprivileged container. Then hit next and then we see the templates tab. Select the only storage pool I have and then use the core template we just downloaded. Hit next, and then we see the disk tab. I'll be asked to select the storage pool and the data size, which I will use the default of eight gigs because that is plenty for just the OS. I'm gonna hit next, and then we're gonna see the CPU tab. I'm gonna give this container two cores. I'm gonna hit next, and then we're gonna see the RAM tab. I'm gonna give this container 2048 megabytes of RAM and then leave the swap as 512 megs. And then I'm going to hit next to see the network tab. The only thing I'm going to change here is that I want to use DHCP instead of static IP because it's less for me to worry about. And then I'm going to do this for both IPv4 and IPv6. And then I will leave the firewall checked as default as well. I'm going to hit next and then we're going to see the DNS tab. I'm going to type in the router IP, which is 192.168.1.1. I'm going to type in my DNS server, which is 192.168.1.207. I'm going to hit next, and then we're going to see the confirmation page. Uh, we'll go ahead and read everything over to make sure this is what I want. And I'm going to leave the start after created box unchecked so we can make adjustments that the wizard didn't prompt us for, and then click Finish. All right, when the container has finished, go ahead and click on Container 305, which is named Wise Bridge, and then Options. I'm going to double click on the Features, and then at the pop-up, I'm going to want to check Nesting, because this will allow containers inside containers. 
Otherwise, we're going to get an error when we run the Docker containers. Now we can right click on the container number 305 and then select Start. And while it's building, we can click on the console and then log in with the user root and then the password that we created earlier. Now we are faced with the configuration menus. The first thing the setup asks for is the prompt for initialize hub services. And I'm going to hit the skip on that. I'm also going to hit the skip for the prompt on system notifications. And then I'm going to hit install on the third thing here about security updates. And then once it's done, I'm going to hit reboot as per the recommendations. And then log in again when it's done rebooting. And here I'm going to do the perfunctory updates and upgrades to make sure that I have the latest and greatest system software before I do anything else. So I'm going to type apt update ampersand ampersand apt upgrade. And then at the prompt, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And then at the prompt for post fix configuration, I will just leave no configuration selected and hit OK because I don't really care about a mail server, right? This is literally just going to be serving one purpose of rerouting the Wisecam traffic. And this will take about a minute to complete. All right, now that we have the container set up, we are ready to install Docker. So I'm going to go apt install dash y docker.io and then it's going to go ahead and start installing and after installation let's check to see if everything is running okay by doing system ctl status and docker and so we can tell from here that docker is running and it is also enabled which means it will be persistent after a reboot so let's go ahead and test if docker is operating by running docker run hello world and sure enough, we get this display here. And if you get an error here about something about slash proc and permissions, more than likely you did not turn on nesting that I had mentioned earlier. So go ahead and shut down the container and then go to options and then features and then check nesting and then reboot. Now that Docker is ready, let's run the wise bridge code on Docker. But before starting Docker, I want to find out the IP address of the Docker container because I'm going to need that for the next step. So I'm going to type IP dash BR A. And here we can see the IP of this container. So let's go ahead and write that down because we're going to need that later on. So one way to start the Docker container is by using the run command. So I'm going to start typing Docker run. And then I'm going to add the dash E to set an environment variable for the wise account email and password. All right, so I'm going to do dash E wise underscore email equals blah at blah.com and then dash E wise underscore password equal and I'm just going to say password because you actually don't need to have a real email or real password here. It's just something that you need to set uh, temporarily. Okay, and then I'm going to add the dash P option to expose port 8554 for RTSP for uh, the host and the containers. That's why I need to do dash P 8554 colon 8554. And then I'm going to do the same thing again for the HLS stream. So dash P 8888 colon 8888. And finally, I'm going to also expose the port for the web user interface, which is 5000. So dash P 5000 colon 5000. And lastly, I am going to specify where the Docker image is going to be located. So it's MRLT8 slash wise dash bridge colon latest, because I'm going to get the latest and greatest. All right, so once I get that running, it's going to take a very short few seconds. Then what I need to do is I need to access the WiseBridge with a web browser through their web user interface. So I'm going to go to a browser window and I'm going to type in 192.168.1.219. All right, remember that's the uh, IP of the Docker container colon 5000. And so what you're going to see now is the page that says you will need your Wise credentials to complete the authentication. So go ahead and type in your real 
uh, Wise account email and password, and then the API ID and API key. And if you don't have the API ID and API keys yet, go ahead and click in the box here to be taken to the setup page where you can generate one with your email and password. This is actually fairly new in 2004, so I think uh, some folks don't have this yet. Yeah, once we get to this page, you can type in your email and your password and it will generate your keys. Go ahead and copy these things and keep them in a safe place. So once the uh, API keys have been set up, let's go back to the web browser page again. And now let's go ahead and fill in the key ID and API key. And once we do that, at this point, I didn't get asked for the password again because I actually had already typed it in. But if you do get a panel that asks you for the username and password, go ahead and type in the one that you made up, right? The blah at blah.com and the password. Now you should see all the cameras that are associated with your account. I have four wise cams associated with my account, so that's why I see four uh, cameras here. And you can adjust the number of cameras per row to display, right? The default, I think it's two, uh, but you can e decrease it down to one or increase it up to four or five, whatever number fits uh, for you. I'm gonna put it back to two by two because that makes sense for me. And you can also adjust the time between the refresh. Right now, this initial page is a snapshot. So basically it just gives you a picture and it will refresh that every X number of seconds. And I think the default here is 30, so I'm just gonna leave it as 30. And down here, you can switch from snapshot to video in the snapshot mode. The camera feed is refreshed by the amount of time that we just talked about. And in the video mode, they are live. But for some reason, I don't have it working right now when I'm recording. It was working earlier before, but anyways, it's just a live feed. And now you can also look at each camera individually. If you click on the play icon to the left of the name of the camera, you can actually pause and unpause that stream from updating in the browser. You can hover over the SD card icon to see the stats of that SD card in terms of capacity and then available space. And if you click on the info icon here all the way to the right, you will get all the information related to that camera, including the model, the firmware version, Mac address, the uh, SD card parameters, the video recording parameters, the URLs for the different streams like the HLS and RTSP, etc., the IP address of the camera, all kinds of stuff. All right? You can also adjust the controls for each camera by tapping where it says controls. Here you can turn the camera off and on or restart the camera. You can turn off and on the night vision mode, etc. Although I haven't really test out all these things yet, so I don't know how well they all work in terms of uh, controlling your wise cam. But for the most part, what I'm looking at here in this video is just literally being able to see the streams without the app or paying for a service. All right, then you can look at the different streams for each camera. So I click on the streams menu down here, and then I can click on HLS, and then it will bring up the HLS stream in my browser. If I select RTMP or RTSP, it will ask you if you want to open it in VLC, assuming that you have VLC downloaded. And since I did not enable the stream for RTMP when I launched Docker, I will select the RTSP stream, which I did enable via ports 8554. Okay, so you can see a, a window come up in VLC that is basically a live view of that particular camera. And you can also acquire snapshots in either the snapshot format or the API thumbnail format. And again, I haven't really explored the differences yet. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably a resolution thing, but as of right now, the default settings for me, both of them are the same 1920 by 1080 resolution. So there you go, we have successfully use the Wise Bridge uh, Docker to view the streams from our camera. And we are also able to stream it to other devices as well. So here I have an example of my iPhone. Um, I have the VLC app on here. And so what I can do is just go ahead and go to the open networks. And then here I can type in the RTSP stream URL. And one thing to note is that 
you can get this URL from uh, PLC when we launched it with the RTSP stream. And it's in this window right here on the bottom because it's got some encoding for passwords and so forth. But it basically works on an iPhone as well. So in this video, we were able to use the WiseBridge tool to create a local stream for my Wise camera so that I can just access them through a web browser instead of accessing the videos via an app or subscription service. I also show that I am able to use the freely available VLC app that runs on Windows, Mac OS, both Intel and even on Apple Silicon, Linux and Android systems. But why would anybody want to watch their streams on VLC you may ask? Well, it's a build up to the next video where we can set up our own network video recorder to record the streams so that the videos stay on my own network and not stored with a third party. There's nothing wrong with paying a vendor for that service. You usually get what you paid for, but I just want to make sure that I am in control of my own videos. For another video that I know you will enjoy, watch this video here. Leave a comment below if you don't enjoy computer jokes, not a single bit of it. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.